Hey, Matt here. I was inspired by uh, Shirley of uh, IP and Tai Chi to talk about a lot of the fakery and just BS that's going on in the Tai Chi world. I'll just talk about Tai Chi in America, what I know and understand. I've been in this game for over 30 years. I've done all, I've seen all. I've done forum competitions, push hands competitions, full contact fighting competitions. And there's a lot of bullshit and fakery on the internet. So uh, let's get started. I was thinking of maybe starting talking about the fighting side first. So with that said, there was two basic organizations, maybe three, that had the full contact fighting competitions. One is the Guoshu. Uh, the second is the United States. USA WKF, the United States uh, Chinese Wushu Federation. Uh, there's been ICMAC by uh, Nick Screma, the International Chinese Martial Arts Association, or something or another. But with that said, you know, Sancho and fighting, in regards to Tai Chi people, there wasn't that many. Um, so the places I'm pretty familiar about that had fighting schools were um, in Boston you had Jason Yee's organization in New York you had William Chen and David Ross and uh, Master Chu who had a student uh, John Signorello who won the um, the Guoshu Lei Tai one year um, Washington DC we have a, we had a couple fight coaches uh, Scott Rodell Tai Yim uh, United States Wushu Academy under Coach Christopher Pei, um, Chinese Martial Art Institute with uh, Sifu Burris. A lot of these guys were producing fighters and sending them to some of these events we re recently mentioned. I know there's a couple fighters from like Florida and Atlanta down south um, fighting in uh, Nick Screma's ICMAC event. Um, Texas was hosting a couple fights. I went to one of them, the Jin Wu down in Dallas, some kind of Jinwu Association, uh, ICMAC type of event that was held down there. I know California and the San Francisco area, they had some fight events. There's some a couple of Sancho coaches out there. Uh, some names that come to mind when it comes to California are uh, Brent Hamby from uh, EMB in the, the Bay Area. And uh, let's see, Mike Patterson was down in San Diego. And I think Tim Cartmel was in uh, the Los Angeles area. And so, uh, so yeah. And, 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 I, and I'm sorry if I miss any other teams. It's just whatever teams sh would show up to come to these fights. Some were international. So you get teams from like England and Brazil and Mexico and Canada. And, and all those people would come as well. Uh, Euro European. And so, um, you know, those people who showed up and the inv individuals, some people weren't even on teams. So sometimes individuals would come. I, I cornered a few people that came as independents. So, um, so yeah, the, the main two events were USA WKF and uh, the Quoshi Lei Tai. Um, I know the Quoshi Lei Tai people, they still had their events almost annually. It only stopped one year because of the COVID. And so, um, so yeah, that's that. There wasn't a lot of Tai Chi people uh, fighting. Uh, let's see, I mentioned um, John Signorello. A couple other people, I, just off the top of my head, is uh, Max Chen and um, his sister. I can't think of her name right now. Um, William C.C. Chen's daughter. And uh, Robert Ruby. I know he's done, been real active, and he was active in full contact fighting, but now he's just more doing push hands as he get, gets older. Uh, Doug Stockton, Brian Wilson. Um, again, not not many Tai Chi people. I think uh, uh, Scott Rodell had one or two students that may have fought full contact. I did it. Um, I wouldn't say I was very good. Uh, I was more of an IT manager at the time. And um, fought in Washington, D.C. A lot of Muay Thai smokers would allow for some Sancho events to happen. And then uh, I did some Kuoshu competitions as well. All right, moving on to push hands. So there's guys that 
you know, they didn't want to do full contact fighting and push hands a lot safer, and people wanted to display the skills of uh, the pushing. There's two kinds. There's the push hands where you're, uh, s there's not uh, stepping, and then there's moving step push hands. So, um, the the New York City people pretty much dominated. Uh, the people came coming from the Chimanchin school. So, um, Washington, D.C., you know, Paul Ramos had a really strong team also. Uh, the Wushin Dao guys, I remember them being really good. And uh, our team, when I was in Richmond, we had some really good guys. Bruce Schaub comes to mind. But the New York guys, they dominated, like Mario Napoli, Mike Picor, A.B. Schneider. Those guys were really good. Uh, Steven Watson. And um, there's a, Josh Was, Watch, Watskins was really good. And um, uh, she, I, I don't know, I can't remember her name. But um, Max Chin competed, but his, his sister was really good. One of the big problems and changes that happened in the Tai Chi competition world was that nobody's showing up anymore. There's not that many people competing in the categories anymore. There's very, very few push hands people, very, very, very few forms people. When I was doing these competitions, there was like 20 people in every division. That was like the early 90s to about 2000, and then it just started waning off once MMA started getting bigger. So... Nowadays, when I hear, like, so-and-so is a champion, you know, they had to beat one person in push hands. Or, you know, someone's really good at Tai Chi, they got the grand champion. The grand champion against who? Like, three people. So, back in the day, it was a lot, it was a lot more people. Now, wushu competitions is different. You got a lot of kids, a lot of teenagers from all over the country, early 20s. Those, those events are pretty big. Like, when it comes to, like, uh, USA team trials, there's definitely no shortage of people. And the competition is really tough, really stiff, and, you know, everyone's performing at a really high level. So, with that said, um, you know, when uh, sometimes I'm just not impressed when, uh, you know, someone says they're, they're a champion, and I have to think about what... what decade was it because you know the competitions now were not like the 90s that's for sure and um it, and even with fight events because a lot of tournaments you have to fight two or three people in a weekend and you go to a, a really marginal small tournament and you push hands against one person or you fight against one person that that's not that high level that i'm that i'm thinking of when it comes to uh competition. Tiffany Chin, that's the person I couldn't think of. I don't know why. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of people who competed. Most of the events were again the same organization, USA WKF, the Guoshu people from Taiwan. Um, most of the places were, you know, competitions in Florida where a lot of national competitions were held. I'm, I know California had a lot, Texas as well. Again, I'm sorry if I'm missing anyone or any other places. It's not on purpose. So, yeah, that's another spectrum of Tai Chi. So we've gone from fighting, you know, people willing to duke it out, and the push hands. And so I want to emphasize those people because they're not woo-woo. They're not those type of people. They're never going to make videos of pushing their students and making their students fly back and stuff just to make themselves look good. A lot of those people making those woo woo videos have, have one, not competed full contact, two, have not competed in push hands. They always talk bad about push hands and competitions, oh, I'm not going to do that, or my techniques are too deadly. And three, they just have good marketing and, and they're fake. They're not being real to themselves, they're not being real to the community. And they're leading people into danger, thinking, oh, this is how Tai Chi is used, as like pushing somebody. Of course, yeah, of course you can push someone down the stairs, push them into a wall, push them into the ground. Yeah, you can do that in self-defense. Um, 
But if you just push them back most of the time, that person's going to walk right back to you. And they might be punching and swinging or kicking or kneeing or elbowing. They can be doing things that can really hurt you if you don't know what you're doing. So enough with the fakery. Uh, let's move on. So another part of the spectrum of the Tai Chi is the traditional Tai Chi. And when, when I mean that, I mean people who are really connected to a lineage. Most of those people, they stick with one lineage and that's all they do their whole life. Um, the first lineage I came across was the Chin Man Ching. It just dominates, dominates the East Coast through Chin Man Ching and uh, Robert W. Smith. And then later on, uh, Yang Jin Do started coming to America and Fu Jian Wen came as well. Most traditional people don't compete. And that's perfectly fine. Um, in USA, there's representatives to the Yang family, Chen family, Wu, and Sun family. The Yang family association is in West Coast, uh, headed by Yang Jun. There's the Yang Yin Taiji Association that has a branch in the USA through uh, my teacher, Coach Ho Wei Chi. Uh, Chen, uh, we got teachers like Chen Xiao Wang, Chen Jin Lei that we're teaching in U.S. Uh, Chin Yu has a representative. There's a few other Chin people. I'm sorry if I don't mention you. Uh, Wu, I'm sure, might have some representatives, some Sun style as well. Some are ranking now, like the Yang Family Association are ranking. Um, they're not doing much with push hands as a competition, but just push hands patterns. When I kind of pointed that out to them to kind of get their head out of the sand about their ranking being well, first of all, it, it, their ranking was creating really pompous and arrogant people. Oh, I'm rank, you know, five or six or whatever, and you're just rank number two, and you're not doing your form up to our standard. No, no, no. So, um, so yeah, it creates a lot of pompous people. And so I told them, I was like, look, I come from a push hands competition background, a fighting background. You guys got to get your hand out of the sand. And about a month later, uh, Xu Xiaodong beat up that guy and made world history, making Tai Chi look really bad. So, um, it is what it is. So you got these people, they're ranking each other now, giving each other all these awards like they're really high on the, on the fight, fight chain, but they're not. Another thing that happened to me around 2000 was I was invited to go to China, to Beijing, and, and do the Duan ranking. And it looked really stupid to me. Why do, why if I've learned so many, you know, I've I learned the traditional long form of the Yang style and the tr traditional sword and the traditional saber. And then they wanted me to go to, to Beijing, pay a bunch of money. And I had to do like these, these little forms like, okay, first you're going to have to learn the eight form and then you're going to have to do the 12 form and then you're going to have to learn this basic little form and then, and then that one. Why? I've already learned, I already learned all the traditional forms. I already learned long fists. I already learned bagua. I, I've already learned, um, you know, some of the modern wushu forms for competition. I was very interested in being on the U.S. wushu team, so I learned the 42 form, the 42 sword, the 16 spear. Um, I learned the the old compulsory Chong Chuan. I learned the new compulsory Chong Chuan. Why do I have to new, do, do these basic forms? It seemed like a waste of time and stupid to me. And then when you come across people who have some kind of Duan ranking, because they live in Beijing or, you know, they live in Asia or they're close, they talk down to you like you're, like you're stupid. And um, first of all, most of them don't even have any fight experience. And they're just doing forms. Forms is like a small part of the whole Chinese martial arts. So I just don't like those pompous attitudes and holier-than-thou rankings. And um, again, it's, it's really silly to me. Another part, of the, another part of the spectrum is the modern Tai Chi people. And, and the good thing about the modern Tai Chi people, it usually leads to the traditional. So people might start with a, the 24 form or a 37 yang short form, but that leads to the traditional. Some people just stay, are happy to stay where they're at. Um, so in Tai Chi, there's, you know, 
these are the people that are most likely to compete in, in some of these events. So there's, like, like I said, the 24 form. Um, there's the 48 form, the 42 sword, 32 sword. Um, there, there's compulsory forms for the Yang, Chen, Wu, and Sun styles. And they're timed events. The, the forms are shorter. They're compacted. They contain a lot of the essence of the traditional forms. There's the weapon forms, like, again, we talked about sword, but there's also fan and saber and pole or spear. So those things, they all exist, and they'll be around, and they're not going away. Then on another part of the spectrum are the people that are into the medicine, like the Chinese medicine. You might have you know, teachers and masters of acupuncture that teach a lot of these things for health. They might teach various forms of qigong for health and uh, tai chi. Some of them know some traditional, some of them just know some of the short forms that they learned when they were in college. And so, and then some of them are connected with Taoist systems or family systems as well. So those people are, tend to be great, full of knowledge, more on the scientific level. Um, Chinese medicine now in America, it's uh, 2021, December. It's, it's very integrated now. A lot of the schools are changing their name to integrated medicine rather than oriental medicine because half of the training now is... Western medicine at the level of a registered nurse. So you have to know everything about every Western disease that there is so you can better serve your patient with acupuncture. Okay, acupuncture has point selections that can help various diseases. Not a cure, but can help manage or help the patient in uh, many ways. The last end of the spectrum is the kind of like the new agey people you know they come from yoga they come from energy work um, some come from religions uh, right now there's a lot of fakery in the tai chi world with like i said you know the jake maces the adam meisners the people bringing in hermeticism and buddhism and all kinds of woo woo crap into the tai chi you know the religions and the the cultists and uh, or you know they say they come from the secret background some secret um, lineage like oh my teacher comes from Yang Jin Ho I mean they advertise like they came from Yang Jin Ho or Yang Shao Ha or they come from like you know some lineage and then you, you ask them questions and they can't answer they just come at you like you know and then there's the people that not even um, teaching Tai Chi at all. They, they make a video that says Tai Chi. They're using good search engine optimization. And you, you Google Tai Chi, and then, you know, they're doing some kind of form that's not even Tai Chi at all. It has no resemblance to Yang, Chen, Wu, Sun, anything whatsoever. It might even be Qigong. We had someone in our hometown teaching Tai Chi, and what she was teaching was some kind of Vietnamese temple form that had no resemblance to any of the family styles of Tai Chi. And when I brought up, did you ever learn any Yang style or Chen, or do you know any of these? Had no clue whatsoever about this. So just be aware what's out there. It's a lot of garbage on the spectrum of Tai Chi. And um, again, I was inspired by Shirley to, to be vocal about it because like I said, I've been everywhere on this spectrum. You know, I've come from Buddhism. As a matter of fact, that's where I came from. I was learning uh, Zen, and my sister told me there was a guy in teaching Tai Chi in the park. I found out Tai Chi could be, you know, complementary to the sitting at practice. I never thought I'd get in, into uh, competition. When I, when I was in art school, a grad student from Beijing told me, he's like, oh, there's a woman, Chinese woman from uh, Shanghai teaching at the Parks and Recreation. I went there, it was, it was Master Ho Wei Chi, and, um, and so I started learning from her, started with 24 form, and then started learning the 85 form, and Taiji Sword, and uh, she's like, okay, we're going to go to uh, Taste of China. So Taste of China was my first competition experience and I only did group form and then 
found out like you can do ind individual form and push hands and started training for those and the rest is history and then they had some you know fight competitions when that when I used to watch fight competitions I was like I hated being on the side I was like I can be in there I can do that and so uh so yeah I wasn't scared I had balls so um it's sad to see so many people doing like Tai Chi fighting videos and they've never fought before and then they're doing these unrealistic applications and unrealistic ways of self-defense it's just it's cringing and it's sad that I even have to talk about this I wanted to be quiet and just stay off the internet and get just back to practice with all the social media and the social dilemma and all the other garbage that's out there how they, you know, censoring people if they speak up about certain things. Th this last year and a half, two years, has just been staying off the internet, doing my own practice, developing my nagong, and creating peace of mind, and just being with family and friends and loved ones. And then, uh, again, uh, Shirley inspired me to just speak up and talk out, talk out about this BS going on in the in the Taiji world. So. With that said, um, enjoy your practice, train hard, listen to the masters, study the classics, study the history, be real, ask what is real, don't just be a blind follower, and dig deep, go deep. Don't just be a butterfly skimming the surface, go deep. Jayo.